I'm continuing our series, Practicing Spiritual Formation. And so far, we've looked at meditation, prayer, fasting, study. And last week, we looked at simplicity. Now, before I get started, I wonder if anyone would like to share your experience, maybe for this past week or since we started the series, what have been your experiences? How many of you practice? Because this is what this is about, practicing spiritual formation. So would anyone like to share about your experiencing practicing? Anyone? Regina? Regina, would you like to share something? You should say something. Yes. Okay, I wasn't going to say anything, but Sean kept saying that I should say something. So when Pastor Joe was talking about simplicity, I really thought about that. And at home, I have so much food in my pantry lots of extra food and I've tried to windle that down and donate it to give it you know away so my home is simplified so I I packed up quite a few boxes and then I put it on our Facebook page and to the community group here unfortunately no one responded that they needed the food and I, I wondered about that so I posted it one more time and said okay it's free if anybody wants these boxes of food let me know but no one's responded. It's been about five days. And then I told Sean, I said, well, what should I do with all this? Sean said, don't worry about it. We'll donate, donate it to an organization. But I did get in touch with um, a prior member here at the church. And I said, I know you haven't been to the church in a while. You know, would you like some of this food? And she said no. And then I asked her, did you happen to see the post about teaching ASL on her page? And she said, yes, I would like to join that. And I said, well, you're welcome. And then I felt better, I felt better about that. So anyways, that's, that's yeah. good. That's good what you said. Yeah. <laughs> Being simple. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, did anybody try to give anything away Regina tried this past week. <laughs> Did anyone try to give away? Because that's, that's part of simplicity is sharing what you have with other people. The accumulation. Anyone? No. Oh. You give away your time. Oh. Well, well, yeah. Yeah, you can, you can definitely give your time. Anyone else you want to talk about your experience? Well, yesterday I, I, I I've I've been telling you all I think a little bit about my my uh, my adventures. <laughs> yesterday I, I mowed the yard. And, and it was, you know, it, it was first time after a long time. And, and the, the idea was, I got up early because it's like I, I, I need to finish up my sermon. I, I, I was still, still finishing. And uh, so I got up early, mow the yard, and I thought I was done. And I'm going to put the lawnmower away. I'm going to put the weed eater away. And then Danelle comes around the house. I'm in the back, and so we're, we're looking at each other in the, in the driveway, and she's motioning for me to come here. <laughs> and I'm like, what? 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 I didn't want to tell him. Yeah. And the uh, somehow in the midst of using my weed eater, my weed eater threw a rock. And, I, and those of you who've been to our house, you know we had a storm door. Yeah. And it's and the storm door doesn't really fit the doorway. It, it, it's it. It was kind of a jerry rig kind of thing, and so, but but I like it because it you can have that door closed and then open the door on the inside and see out. The cats like it. Well, the door was shattered from a rock that was thrown from the weed eater, and Danelle had been telling me that she wanted to get rid of it, and so I I, I, I was I was just I, I went from this relief 
to, to I've got all this to do, and now I've got to clean up five pounds of glass. Oh, I was angry. I, I was so angry. Well, in, in the midst of of dealing with it, and I just told Danelle to stay in the house, leave me alone. <laughs> I got to deal with this, and so I, I I I took it, I took it off, I removed everything, and now that you can see that our door needs to be painted really bad. <laughs> <laughs> but in, in in the midst of all of this, I I, I was I, I was talking to the Lord in my mind, and I and I, I'm angry, like God, I'm really angry. Um, can you help me with this? And and I, I I was able to put everything away, and 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 again, I'm thinking in terms of I I, I I've got to get to work. I, I'm you know I, I've got to get to work. This is taking too much time. Well, in the course of cleaning it up, and we've had this kind of ongoing thing with our, our neighbor across the street, and uh, we've been fighting over parking spaces. <laughs> you know, we, we park our extra cars across the street. Well, he doesn't like for people to park in front of his house. He happens to be right across from us, so we have to maneuver around. So, and, and we've had some miscommunication with each other. Well, in the course of cleaning it up, he comes over and, and just wanted to know what happened. I told him, and, you know, this, this could be worse. I mean, you, you broke a glass as opposed to, like, throwing a rock in somebody's eye or, you know, hitting something that, you know, that, that, that might not be able to be replaced or removed or whatever. I'm like, yeah, yeah, you're right. So, so we, we talked a little bit, and, and, and I've been meaning to clean out my garage. Vern knows about the garage. Brian knows well, it, it's, it, we've, we've just accumulated a bunch of junk because it, it, it's all stuff that needs to go in a truck. It's not like what you would throw in the back of a car to move it. it need, it's, it's nasty and it needs to be needs to be thrown away. Well, I thought, I've got an idea and, and I, I think now it must have been God because um, you know we're having this, this ongoing thing with the neighbor across the street. And I feel like the Lord told me, why don't you ask him if you can borrow his truck? Because he just parks it right out in front of the front of the house, just to kind of a, as a placeholder, so nobody parks in front of his house. So he, he was already walking across the street, and I said, hey, you mind if I ask you something? Would it be okay if I borrowed your truck? Well, he comes back over, and we're talking, and he's like, yeah, you can borrow it anytime you want. I keep that truck, you know, because everybody needs to have one. And, you know, and so we're having all this conversation and, I, and I'm like, I, I, I gotta get, get back to work. <laughs> and then, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm just about to get started. And then I get a call from my boss. Apparently something's going on at the, at, at the courthouse. And, you know, so I, I'm, I'm thinking in terms of like, oh, uh, you know, I, okay, I've got to do this. And so I went and took care of that and I got back and it's getting late and like, <sighs> and I took the time after I got back from the courthouse, I sat down and I just trying to practice what I'm preaching. Yeah. And in the midst of, you know, like all the stuff and, and you know, and, and I, I, I was really proud of myself. I didn't say anything that I really regretted. I did apologize though for getting so mad. And, but, but whenever I, I, got still and I got quiet it was, I, I, I felt like the Lord was just telling me look it, it, it's okay you don't have to you don't have to get so worked up you don't you don't have to be so concerned and it all kind of came together and you know so that's the, I'll be talking to you about this a little bit today what I want to talk about is solitude we need sometimes to quiet ourselves. We need to sometimes get ourselves away. In, in the case of yesterday, you know, in the, uh, I've got all this to do. I really need to slow down and make sure that I hear God's voice. Now, because of the pandemic, I think a lot of us, maybe most of us, have gotten more than our share of solitude. How many of you would, would, you would say that? I'm ready to see somebody else than just the people who are in my house. 
Well, one of the funnier memes that I saw on social media said, maybe you saw this, when social distancing ends, let's not tell some people. <laughs> and self-isolation has had on our society. I mean, if, I, I think in, in, the, in the future months, once we finally end, if, if it ever ends, that there will be studies and they'll talk about what happened to people in the course of being alone, being isolated, being separated from the people that they care about. And the truth is, Depending on your personality, <clears throat> silence and solitude can be a blessing or a curse. Introverts, how many introverts, let's unite. <laughs> we love our solitude. We love the silence. <laughs> we see people pointing at each other. <laughs> Extroverts, on the other hand, hate it. How many of you would I identify as an extrovert? I love to be around people. I love the interaction and this isolation stuff. That's for the birds. <laughs> How many of you do not like being alone? <laughs> oh, Tracy. I, 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 was, I was raised an only child. Pretty much. I, I have an older brother and sister. They were already out of the house by the time I came to self-aware of who I was. And so I, I, was, I was good about being alone. But as I got older, as we had kids, I started finding myself like I had to go do something. And I, and I wanted to take somebody along with me. Take uh, along with me. I, I, I don't like being alone. Except when I want to be alone. Now, how many of you, whenever you're just doing stuff during the day, listen to music or maybe just listen to the radio just so that you have some noise going on in the background? Got the TV on, you're not really watching it. It's just the fact that it's noise. You do that? Anybody? Yeah? Now, do you know why you do that? Is there a reason other than, well, I just like the noise? Well, Richard Foster says, Jesus calls us from loneliness to solitude. And our fear of being alone drives us to noise and to crowds. But loneliness and clatter are not our only alternatives. We can cultivate an inner attitude or inner solitude and silence that sets us free from loneliness and fear. Loneliness is an inner emptiness. Solitude is inner fulfillment. Mm -hmm. Another person said, time spent in solitude with God is not time spent alone. Yeah. So what do I mean when I'm talking about solitude? According to James Bryan Smith, the author of The Good and Beautiful God, effective solitude is intentional time alone with ourselves and with God. You see, we, we need time alone with God, not just so we can talk to him, but so he can talk to us. 
And God isn't prone to speaking over things. Mm. If you recall the story of Elijah, yeah. you know, he had just, just had probably, I mean, <clears throat> in the Old Testament, Elijah was a rock star. He, he had just called down fire from heaven onto a sacrifice and then had the prophets of Baal, who were false prophets, killed. I mean, he was, he, he was powerful. He could have done anything he wanted to at that point. But the Bible tells us that in the wake of what happened, he got scared because the queen said that she was going to kill him. And so he ran away. And he's hiding out in a cave. And, and Elijah was someone who was used to hearing the voice of God. Yeah. I mean, God was the one who told him to pray. And when he prayed for it not to rain, it didn't rain for three and a half years. And then when he prayed again, it started raining again. You know, the Holy Spirit came on this guy at one point. And he outran people on horses. This is this is the kind of stuff that's in the in the, in the Old Testament. You need to read this book. <laughs> but after after receiving this threat, he goes into hiding, and he's calling out to the Lord. And he says, "God, there's nobody else. I'm the only one, and they're trying to kill me." And so God tells him, "I'm going to show you myself, and just just sit tight." And then I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come and talk to you. And the story goes that, that he, he, God passes by and there's a, there's a storm. There's an earthquake. There, there's, there's a whirlwind. There's all this activity going on outside the cave. But then all of a sudden there was a whisper. And at that point, Elijah, who had, was used to hearing the voice of the Lord walked to the front of the cave to meet with God. And then God spoke to him about what he was to do next. God had to get his attention. And in order to get his attention, he had to get to the place where he was ready to listen for the whisper of God's voice. But we also see solitude in the life of Jesus. And it was actually a regular practice in the life of Jesus. We see it first whenever he began his ministry. Mark says that the Holy Spirit drove Jesus into the wilderness, into the desert, where he fasted and prayed for 40 days. And this was to prepare for his ministry that was coming. And then after coming back, he when it, the night before he was going to choose his 12 disciples, Scripture says that Jesus spent his time in the hills in solitude, seeking God about the 12. And he also went alone, away in a boat, whenever he got news that John the Baptist had been killed. And after a day of healing the sick, Jesus got up early and went off to pray by himself. And at one point, the disciples got up and they looked around. Where did Jesus go? And they had to go find him because he was in solitude, meeting with the Lord. He also went away to pray after feeding the 5,000. And then after sending his disciples out on their first missionary journey, if you will, where they were praying for the sick and casting out demons, whenever they came back and they were all excited, Lord, look what we did. He said, that's awesome. Let's go get some rest and let's spend some time away from the people. And then also, whenever John, James, and Peter, they went with Jesus up on the mountain where Jesus was transfigured, where he, he met with Moses and Elijah and the Lord. 
This was in, in solitude. It was away from everyone else. And then on the night before he, he would be crucified, he went into the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. And he asked his disciples to come along. And they, they, they sat off in a distance and, and they were tired and they fell asleep. But Jesus went away from them in solitude to pray, to meet with God. Well, this was all part of what, what Jesus lived in terms of his connection with the Father. And in John 15, Jesus said, Stay joined to me, and I will stay joined to you. Just as a branch cannot produce fruit unless it stays joined to the vine, you cannot produce fruit unless you stay joined to me. I'm the vine and you are the branches. If you stay joined to me and I stay joined to you, then you will produce lots of fruit. But you cannot do anything without me. Now we're used to hearing this in terms of abide, right? Right? We've heard it in terms of abide. Yeah. Well, and, and we, we think in terms of, of living. You know, the, the way we do things. Well, Jesus lived a life of constant connection with the Father. And the picture, and, and Pam taught on this a few weeks ago, that connection, that the life is in the vine. The life, it, when, we're, when we graft something in, the life is there. It's in the sap of the connection, that contact. And Jesus lived in constant contact. You know, we, there's a, a service of the, of, about that, you know, in terms of email, that you're in constant contact. Well, Jesus was in constant contact with the Father. And that's the kind of life that he wants for his disciples, for those who follow after him. And the way we stay connected, the way that we stay joined, is through these practices of meditation, prayer, fasting, and study. They're all geared towards connecting us with the Father. And solitude makes space for that. So that we can meditate, so that we can pray, so that we can fast, so that we can study and understand what God's saying. And that's the intent. God wants to do his work in us. And the way he works in us is when we allow ourselves to do these things. And solitude gives us a space to do it. So, how do we practice solitude? Richard Foster has just a few tips. The first one is to take advantage of little solitudes that fill our day. One way is take time before people wake up and start the day. I don't know about you, but when the kids were little, once they woke up, it was, it was nonstop until they went to bed. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so <clears throat> make some time before anyone else gets up and before you have to get to get running the rat race if you find yourself waiting you know nowadays we've got our cell phones so what do we do when we're sitting around and we're we're bored we pull out our cell phones yeah. right yeah. we're waiting you know we're waiting in line we pull it out you know, we, we're whenever we're we're in the middle of of doing something. You know, we we won't go to our phone, but whenever we have that lag time, we pull it out. So, when we're waiting for something, use that time for solitude, just for a second. Maybe close your eyes, or just quiet yourself hmm. wherever you are. And just allow yourself to connect with God. You can also practice silence before a meal. 
You know, how often do we say our little prayer and it's just kind of, we just rattle it off. Just, mm -hmm. Lord, thank you for this day, this food, blessed amen. You know, good bread, good eat, good God, let's eat. You know, it, <laughs> what, instead of just, just saying words that we, that, that we don't even think about, maybe we could spend that, the, those brief seconds before we eat in silence. Just to fix our minds on, on God for just a moment. And also, and, and, and of course, this is, this is not a, a limit. I mean, you can do that. You can find all these things in the course of your day. But before you go to bed, right before you go to bed, just allow yourself just a moment of silence. And it also kind of helps to calm down and, and go to sleep, too. So... Number two, find or make a place designed for <laughs> solitude. Just try. It, it, this, this is what this is. It's practice. It's all practice. We're practicing. And, and we, we may not get it right, and there may be some, some fumbles, and, and, and then again, there may be some successes, and you find out like, man, I, I really like doing this, you know? Number two, make... Or find a place designed for solitude. How many of you remember Superman? He had his fortress of solitude. <laughs> you don't remember Superman? Remember the Superman. fortress of solitude. Wow. It was really funny, like in, when the, the the cartoons, but you know, it was, it was also kind of funny in the movies. But uh, but even Superman needed a place. <laughs> and so. Find a place, make a place. And you can do this inside or outside <coughs> your home. Several years ago, when I, I was working for a newspaper in, in, in Victoria, I, I was I, I was stuck there. I didn't it, it took more time to, to, to drive the lunch than than to actually just just bring lunch and whatever. So there was a church across the street. I've always liked you know, really fancy ornate churches. Yeah. And so I went over one day and, and I, I just asked them, uh, doors were open, uh, do you care if I go inside and just sit during lunch? They're like, no, sounds like a great idea, go ahead. And so I would go in, I, I'd, I'd eat my sandwich and then I'd walk across the street and I would just go sit. And I'd look around, look at all the statues, look at all the all the, the, the paintings and all the, all the stuff. And you know, at the time I didn't know anything about this, but I, I, I didn't want to leave. You know, I, I felt so good, and then I, I, I'd go back to work, and you know. But, um, but find a place inside your home, outside your home, where you can just, just be alone for a few minutes with you and the Lord. Number three, make times to limit your words. Huh. And Foster even suggests try to. Make a day that you just don't speak. Now, here's the thing. If you're doing that, be sure to let the people know around you that you're not speaking. But practice silence. Because, you know, sometimes we do. We fill our, fill our, our, our atmosphere with words and with things as opposed to just allowing ourselves to be quiet. So limit the words sometimes. Number four, make time each quarter to reorient and reconsider your life goals. You know, we're hard charging, you know, we're just always doing, you know, we're just take some time to think about, you know, am, am I on track? Am I going the direction I'd like to go? Or do I need to change my trajectory a little bit. That's what, what the, and you can do this, is just take some time you know, before God to, to consider direction and trajectory. And number five, take a personal retreat for personal solitude. I know that sometimes that's a, that's a luxury for some, and that's why we try to find it in, in the course of our day. And if, if you can actually take some time to do that, then by all means. But the important thing is to get us in a place where we can, can
can allow ourselves to be quiet, to be still. So, that's really all I have to say in terms of, of solitude. But, but here's the thing. I think, I think God still wants to minister to us. And, and I, as I was getting ready this morning, I, I just had, it, it was a, just a recurring thought over and over that there, there's a lot of fear in our society right now. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of fear. There's a lot of anxiety. And God wants to free us from fear and anxiety. And so as, as we close this morning, I, I want to give each of us an opportunity to respond to the Lord because I think he wants he wants to, to free some folks from the fear that you're experiencing and it may just be just a couple of people but I, I, I just felt it really strongly that there, there's there are some people that it, it, you're really afraid, and maybe it's it maybe it's what's going on in the pandemic, and you're thinking in terms of you know well, well, what's going on with the election, what's going on with you know lots of stuff that are completely out of our control, mm -hmm. and God wants us to experience His peace. Mm -hmm. So, if we could, I'd like for us to stand. If you're where you can stand. Holy Spirit, you're welcome here in this room. We thank you for your presence here with us today. And Lord, I thank you for the gifts that you've given us in terms of these practices, the, these means of grace, as some call them, so that we might be able to be connected with you that we might be joined to you, just like, like a tree, just like a, a vine, that we are connected and we experience your life flowing through us. So God, this morning, I ask you to come and speak to those who are experiencing fear. Holy Spirit, come and bring your peace.